Daniel Dubois Philip Herkovich. If you have not seen this fight yet, I highly recommend it because it's an action-packed, really fun fight. Now, spoiler alert, if you haven't heard the outcome yet and you'd rather watch the fight first, go do that and then come back to my breakdown. But I'm going to tell you the outcome you probably already heard. Um, Dubois stopped Herkovich. In fact, the doctor stopped the fight in the eighth round due to uh, cuts on both of um, Herkovich's eyebrows, left and right. So let's take a look at how this came about because Herkovich was really the favorite going into this fight. And the wonderful thing for Daniel Dubois is this really cements him in the top 10 because Herkovich was ranked by the ring in the top 10, whereas Dubois was not yet. So I think it's pretty unquestionable now that he, Dubois, deserves a place within those rankings. So the fight starts out and um, I'm going to refer to Daniel Dubois' ring name as a, as a jumping off point. So Daniel calls himself Daniel Dynamite Dubois. But the theme for this fight, I think, is a different D word. It's discipline. And it's Daniel Dubois' discipline that made the difference in this fight. I believe not only did he have much greater discipline in his training camp, which allowed him to then show more discipline in the actual fight. I think Herkovich probably slept on Dubois a little bit, perhaps because he felt he dominated them in he dominated Dubois in an earlier sparring session. But for whatever reason, um, Herkovich, I felt, did not have uh, did not have a disciplined training camp and therefore couldn't display the discipline that he needed to during um, the crucial moments in the fight. Okay, so we'll start with the first round and in fact, I'm going to contradict myself because right off the bat, Herkovich was the more successful fighter during the first round. And here's, here's sort of the underlying story with that. If we can look at um, Dubois and Herkovich. Now, who do you think is the more quote unquote naturally talented athlete? Well, if we judge the book by the cover, Dubois definitely will win the physique competition. But if I if we analyze how both fighters um, find success, it looks to me that Herkovich kind of find, found his own peculiar 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 ways to win and just constantly goes back to that. Whereas Dubois seems like more of the type of athlete that has to practice repetitions over and over and he's willing to do that and so that's how he finds his success in the ring so this manifested in the first round because Herkovich throws this sort of unconventional jab right hand and it's really more more of a pawing motion it's not really a jab it's almost as if Herkovich wants to stick his left hand out there to hold his opponent's head he doesn't but it's sort of an as if motion because he's not throwing the jab to land a hard punch he's kind of just putting it out there to line up his placement of his right hand which is not a straight right hand it's kind of a it's literally a smash he said he was going to smash he said he was going to smash Dubois and that's kind of the motion he uses with that right hand it's sort of like he's almost trying to hold Dubois' head out there with his left hand and come over and smack it with his right hand. It's not quite an overhand right, but it's definitely not a straight right. It's a little bit loopy. Now, the reason I say that Herkovich is the sort of more naturally talented fighter is because somehow he found this weird unconventional um, way of throwing a jab and a right that works for him. And he just stuck with it because I guess... You know, if it ain't broken, why fix it? Well, he may have a few things to think about after this fight. But the one big flaw with Herkovich 
Herkovich is one two. This is balance after he throws the two if he misses with that right hand because it's almost like his rear foot, his which should be supporting him somewhat. It's his right foot is can be off the ground sometimes, and so now he's way off balance if he misses with the right hand. Um, so um, I'll I'll come back to that, you know how he could fix that being off balance factor. But regardless, in the first round, Herkovic was able to find Dubois with his funny little jab right. And if you listen to the commentators, you think that Dubois is just standing there taking punches. But that really wasn't the case. Um, Dubois, I, th I think he was trying to figure out how to time that one too so he could counter or sometimes he was trying to throw a sim simultaneous sort of overhand right of his own. But he did he did move his head ever so slightly, some of the time, at least in the first round, so that the punches weren't always landing completely flush. Now this is an important point because the tide will turn as we, as we move through the rounds. Um, now the other D word that made the big difference in the fight other than discipline was defense because Herkovich really doesn't have very good defense um, he doesn't hold his hands in a good guard position and when he his head movement is limited to moving straight back on a straight line kind of another thing with theme in common with Deontay Wilder and we saw how that worked out now when you're again a gifted in quotations athlete and everything's you know working a hundred percent your timing's perfect you can probably avoid a lot of punches by just moving back quickly and then coming back into position to throw a punch moving your head straight back in a straight line to avoid a punch well at least they miss but it's not the greatest defensive tactic now by contrast Dubois did something that showed me again that he had a lot of discipline in the training camp. So once Daniel kind of got a little bit of the, the timing for Herkovich's jab right hand, he would weave to his left under the right hand and then weave back to his right to avoid um, Herkovich's left hand. And if you, it, it's very quick and it's a very tight and very subtle movement. But Dubois does start doing that even in the first round, and the commentators didn't give him any credit for that. But I, I give him a ton of credit because um, th that double weave is not a move that's like reaction in live time. You're not going to wait till you see that punch coming and then go, oh, I should weave this way. Oh, here's the other hand. I should weave that way. It's No, it's it's got to be automatic, and that tells me he had a lot of discipline in his training camp, and that his trainer had the um, insight, foresight to make sure that Daniel drilled that double weave um, probably ad infinitum. But it definitely came into play and it was it's sort of the perfect thing to do with Herkovich because now Dubois is still within punching range as he comes off either one of those weaves and he's in a position to come back with a punch himself. So for example, if he weaves under the left, he can come up with a left hook. Weave to the right, he can come back with his uh, right cross. Um, and and Herkovich is right there because Herkovich has just gotten done throwing those punches and he's not had time to step off yet. So kudos to Dubois and his camp for, um, for drilling that a lot. Now... Uh, Things actually started to shift a little bit in the second round because Dubois was able to land um, s several very sort of stabbing jabs to Herkovich's head, which, which kind of like froze him a little bit and stunned him. And it was sort of an indication of things to come. So I felt that Dubois had a much more effective jab than Herkovich. He also started to get the timing down where he could also counter with his own right hand, which was not as, um, say, looping as Herkovic. Uh, and now, to Daniel's credit, he also mixed in his left hook. Um, now, 
to Hergovich's credit in the second round, he did start throwing more variety of punches. He would throw his right uppercut. He, he tried to throw some uh, body shots. Um, but I, I just think even in the second round, going into the third round, fourth round, we start to see Herkovich, uh, Herkovich's conditioning was not up to snuff in order to fight at that pace that these men were fighting at. So there, that, that is just evident of a lack of discipline on Herkovich's part during camp. Um, at any at any level, there's no excuse to come in um, under conditioned, and certainly not at a world class, uh, at a world class level when you're being compensated so well to perform. Um, get yourself in shape. Now, right towards the end of the second round, uh, the critical thing that happened was that Herkovich sustained a cut over. Wait, over his uh, right eyebrow. So I believe that was a left hook from Daniel Dubois. Now, initially, the commentators said it was a clash of heads, but later on in the fight, they clarified that it was from a punch, but they didn't did not identify specifically. Um, however, Hergovich didn't have a cut throughout the whole second round, so it must have happened to right towards the end. And Daniel, that's when Daniel was starting to open up a little more with those left hooks. Now, another critical um, way that Herkovich showed a lack of discipline was between the second and third and going into the third rounds. Um, Herkovich's cornerman, Ronnie Shields, is a world-class trainer, and he told Herkovich exactly the right thing to do. He said, double jab, right hand. You know, emphasis on double because Herkovich was just throwing his single sort of pawing jab, right hand. But he said, double jab, right hand. He said, then sometimes double jab, right hand, come back with the left hook. Now that's critical right there because when if Herkovich overshoots his right hand and is off balance, throwing the left hook is just a natural way for him to bring himself back to being on balance in a position to fight. And then Shields adds, hey, sometimes mix in your right uppercut which Herkovich was doing anyway. You know, he was just throwing his uppercut kind of by itself, but these are great instructions because these are all punches that um, Ronnie Shields knows Herkovich can execute this. So he gave him clear, doable instructions. And what does Herkovich do? He doesn't ever throw a double jab. He doesn't ever come back with the left hook. So, um, to me, that's a lack of mental discipline because, again, at, at Herkovich's level, he darn sure should know how to throw a double jab, right hand, left hook. That's kind of boxing 101. So for him not to do that, you know, I don't, I don't know what that's about. I also don't think there's um, anything lost in translation because even if English is in his first language, um, you know, when you spend enough time in any boxing gym, you sort of do learn the words for jab, right, hook. Um, and in, on top of that, I, I believe there's a, a second person in Herkovich's corner who was also sp speaking um, in his language to him. So one would hope that he accurately translated um, the trainer's instructions if need be. But... Um, you know, that's that's between Herkovich and his corner. I have no idea exactly why he didn't follow those instructions because it, that would have been perfect if he would have done a double jab right hand and then sometimes added in the left hook. It, it, would, it could have made the difference for him. We'll see, in the, I think it was either the third or fourth, the one time Herkovich actually does execute the jub, double jab right hand. The right hand lands flush. So... Um, you, you would think that Herko Herkovich would make a mental note of that and then say, oh, you know, maybe I should do that again. But he didn't. So towards the end of the first half of the round, meaning r like rounds um, three, four, five, uh, Dubois slowly, you know, starts, well, maybe not slowly, but he starts to take over the fight from Herkovich. Um, 
I think he, he got the timing. He started to get the timing better for Hrkovic's, um one, two, and was able to work off that and then also just initiate his own um, attacks because Dubois was in, in better condition. Now, one other point is let's take a look at the footwork. Uh, for From bell to bell, really, Dubois was more, had the more bouncy footwork. Again, that indicates to me that he was in, he you know, he put his road work in. You, you can't, and, and maybe he put a lot of uh, jump rope in too, but in order to sustain that type of footwork, um, you have to be in great shape. By contrast, Herkovich had much more plodding footwork, and again was, uh, he's he just doesn't have good footwork. He's off and off balance, even when he's trying to throw these powerful punches. So towards the end of the fifth round, um, Herkovich sustains another cut on the opposite eyebrow on his on his left side. So now he's faced with two cuts. Um, I, I'm sure his, his cut men tried his best, but those cuts turned out to be kind of the determining factor in the fight, along with his conditioning. So in the sixth round, um, uh, Dubois starts to pick it up, and he's he's able to move Hergovic, um back. And he's able to land some, a, a couple of really hard shots, like a jab right hand that that knocks Herkovich's head um, straight back. In the seventh round, you know, Dubois just completely takes over. Um, he moves Herkovich back to the ropes where Her Herkovich is sort of inexplicably um, inactive against ropes and Dubois is just able to unload until, you know, they, they fall into a clinch or that kind of thing. Um, now, I'm, I'm sure that when they're clinched up on the ropes and whatnot, um, there's, it's quite possible that there's clashing of heads and whatnot, which is making those cuts worse for um, Herkovich. But uh, in any case, he comes out for the eighth round, but, um, you know, a few minutes into the eighth round, it's, it's the, the action's all in Dubois' favor, and uh, the ref intervenes to take Her Herkovich over to see the doctor. The doctor tells the ref, you know, it's we're done. And when the ref just waves it off in Herkovich's face, I mean, there's zero protest from Herkovich. He doesn't he doesn't do the, you know, what, I'm fine. You know, there's there, there's zero reaction from him. So it's kind of like, maybe he's just glad that was done. I don't know. Um, that's something only uh, Philip Perkovich knows. But in any case, um, the one other thing I have to say about the cuts is that also might indicate that Philip Perkovich didn't put himself through enough hard sparring because believe it or not in sparring um, your skin the skin toughens up a little bit because you're getting subjected to getting <laughs> a sweaty leather in your face um, with a little more vehemence than say a regular sparring session um, so just judging from the overall performance of Herkovich I'd say he came in way under conditioned so he may not have gotten enough hard rounds in as well um, and sad to say he just didn't listen to the perfect instructions given to him by his corner um, Ronnie Shields so again I think a huge part of that is probably his conditioning um, he may have wanted to be able to do what Ronnie asked him to do and just couldn't couldn't get it together um, but that's also it's also it's physical and mental and emotional of course but uh, sometimes just knowing what to do is simply not enough um, especially if you're if you're not in shape for that for that fight and and it's now apparent right that this guy you thought maybe wasn't so good named Daniel Dubois you thought you owned him in sparring but now he's owning you in the fight um, big letdown so where does that leave Herkovich? Well, uh, if you heard my form, my previous breakdown of the top 10 heavyweights, you know I was not a fan of Herkovich even prior to this fight. So uh, 
honestly, I think he, he trades places with Dubois. Dubois can jump into the top 10. And Herkovic, um, unfortunately for him, you know, kind of falls out of the top 10. Regardless, um, he put on, by putting on that type of performance, it doesn't really make uh, those promoters in Saudi Arabia necessarily want to bring him back unless he's now going to be used sort of as the proverbial opponent. Um, But yeah, this is a very disappointing performance on the part of Philip Herkovich because it was, I think, due to not putting in enough work in his training camp and that's that's just something that's pretty much unforgivable at 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 his level of competition. Um, on the plus side, now you know Dubois is apparently in talks to fight AJ. Personally, I think Zhang deserves the shot, or even Parker deserves deserves the shot before Dubois. But I do understand, you know, the the marketing aspect that it'd be a great um, um, British heavy. British heavyweight affair and it would certainly sell out I think and you know in in a sense Dubois did has earned his stripes so to speak Um, even in his loss to Usyk you know he did step up to the plate Um, some people will say there was some controversy or as the Brits say controversy about that low blow Um, But we do have to remember that Dubois fighting Usyk in the Ukraine, you should not be naive enough to think that when there are these sort of questionable calls that anything is going to go in your favor. You should definitely assume that if you're going into the champ's backyard, everything's loaded against you. So you basically have to pull off, pull off a KO where you're going to get a, you're going to take an L. but in any case, I think Dubois learned a lot in that loss to Usyk, number one. Not just not just the fact that he could get in the ring with Usyk and, and hang, so to speak, but also he just learned that he, he belongs on, on this world-class level. Um, so that must have been a huge sort of confidence boost, even though he took the L. And then, of course, he took on this behemoth of Jarrell, P.E.D. Miller, um, who was like over 300 pounds and and brought it, you know. I mean, how often is a 250-pound man uh, look that small? Well, I guess against a 350-pound man. But he, he, he brought it to Jarrell Millen, and it was a good win for him. So now he's on sort of this upsurge, um, and uh, hopefully Dubois can just keep his head and his wits about him and, and carry on with this. Now, the one sort of question I have about um, the Dubois corner was his trainer was giving him very clear and appropriate instructions. I do remember he said something like, you know, I want the double jab. I don't need you to land both jabs, but I want you to step in with the jab to land the right hand. And that's exactly right. You know, he's asking Daniel to use the jab almost in a defensive method to get in position to land his right hand makes a ton of sense um especially if you're you know if you if you've got a close distance on your opponent um and then he also asked him to keep a tight guard uh but the one question i have is that it seems like dubois father was a constant sort of presence in the corner and um actually you know, Dubois, Daniel was like spending some time kind of trying to listen to what his father's saying. That's kind of a no-no in the corner. There's only supposed to be one voice. That's the trainer's voice. Um, there's another fellow kind of leaning over the ropes, chiming in. So hopefully Team Dubois kind of resolves that. Uh, because clearly Team Dubois did all the right things in his in his training camp. Um, like I said, I, I, it showed me right away those those double weaves, um, those nice, nice, tight double weaves that Daniel, that Team Dubois um, came up with solid game plan and really drilled the heck out of uh, certain movements in the ring. So, 
Huge props to Daniel Dubois. Where do you think that leaves him in the top 10? Where, where do you think he's ranked? Where do you think Philip Perkovich should be ranked? Who do you want to see Daniel Dubois fight next? You want to see him fight AJ? Who should Herkovich fight next? Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and thank you for listening.